Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, May 24, 2017, and I officially finished the 300 push-ups for 30-day challenge this morning and decided to push myself even further as I know I was talking about um, trying 500 push-ups and, uh, you know, actually I, uh, I did that this morning. I know it's backwards, but um, I did each one of those hash marks represents 25, 525, 125 times four is uh, 500. So I did 500 this morning um, and I alternated sets of 50 and 25. And all, you know, ultimately I feel a little bit uh, tighter today, uh, um, doing more than the 300 that I'm usually accustomed to doing. So, uh, you know, I might just push this to continue on and to do the 500 push-ups a day for 30 days to see how that goes. You know, because I do notice a significant increase in um, just overall uh, bicep circumference. Uh, I definitely, my shirts feel a little bit tighter and my back feels a lot tighter. And I heard was, you know, someone said that, dang, Matt, your back's really, really starting to pop. And so... Um, I think that 500 is the is a natural uh, progressive step in this process, and um, I'm gonna see I'm gonna see about that. I'm gonna try to do 500 uh, for 30 days. There were days that it was particularly difficult, uh, especially the days where on the weekends where you know you wake up, you do your routines, you know, shopping, cooking, cleaning, playing with your kids, um, doing errands, things like that. You get home and you're doing laundry and you fall asleep and and the whole thing shot and there are I think two or three days during the last month where it did become um, like oh crap I better get this done quick uh, but other than that though I planning ahead the way that I did I think everything worked out in the end and I think that um, I made it work and so um, I think that 500 a day is 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 entirely possible and um, I believe that shooting for that um, not much of a stretch, so um, I'm gonna start doing that. So 500 push-ups a day for 30 days. I'm going to make that my my new monthly goal or my new daily goal for the next month, and so I'll put that on my calendar. So I finished 300 push-ups a day for 30 days challenge uh, this morning, and you know it went uh, just as easy as the others. And I decided to push it an additional 200 uh, by alternating. Normally I bang out. 100 and then I do sets of 50 until I'm done but uh, with today since I knew I was gonna be kind of probably pushing 500 I alternated between 50 and 25 so 50 push-ups 25 push -ups, 50 push-ups 25 push-ups um, and it went a lot easier you know it wasn't uh, all that wear and tear it was it was pushing yourself take a little break pushing break and that worked out so I think I can do it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that for the next month I'm gonna do 500 um, other than that, uh, the Seattle region, uh, we lost a in the uh, any any NFL fan that was that followed the NFL for a number of years, uh, particularly in the uh, in the '90s, remembers Cortez Kennedy uh, as a Seahawk fan. He was a gentle giant. He was, you know, Steve Largent got and Jim Zorn and Dave Craig, those guys, and Brian Blades and. Um, you know, those guys, uh, Joey Galloway, those guys got the recognition and the, uh, you know, the acknowledgement from a lot of people. Because people paid attention to offenses, but when you have a team as horrible as the Seahawks were, um, I forget, they were 1-15 or 2-14, one of those one one of those, uh, one of those records. And he actually ended up winning Defensive Player of the Year. And uh, as a defensive tackle, that guy was a beast. And the thing is, any from just hearing uh, things that I've heard and read and over the years, because I've been a Seahawk fan for years. And I mean, this is before the, you know, I I went to, you know, the day my grandfather died, I was actually, this is January 8th, 2005. I was actually at the playoff game between the Rams and the Seahawks and Seahawks ended up losing that game. I remember Daryl Jackson dropped the pass in the end zone from Matt Hasselbeck as time expired and we lost. I think it was like 24-17 or something. Um, 
but I remember that. You know, I was at the game that Sean Alexander scored five touchdowns in the first half against the against the Minnesota Vikings, and I was there because I was giving Randy Moss a hard time. Um, you know, I've been a Seahawk fan for a long time, and you know, like anyone from my generation, we played Tecmo Super Bowl or Tecmo Bowl, and so and then the Seahawks. You know, Cortez Kennedy was probably one of the best players um, on the team, um, and it was. Uh, you know, losing him at age 48, uh, you know, I mean, you understand that guys of that magnitude and that, you know, that big of, a, of indi in, an individual, most likely it's going to be cardiac related, um, you know, because he was a bigger guy, you know, the heart has to work harder. And then when you have a, all that additional weight, um, you know, to provide oxygen for and to pump blood through, it's going to put extra strain on your heart and probably didn't have the greatest diet. Uh, Unfortunately, and maybe that was it. I don't know. I don't think they've released the official um, cause of death. But Cortez Kennedy passing away is, from a Seahawks perspective and an NFL fan's perspective, is a great loss. Uh, a great loss. And it's been, I mean, two legends in the city of Seattle in a matter of a week. You know, it's, uh, it's tough to bear. You know, I, I, I saw that in the news. I didn't. It, it hit me so hard to the point where I was like, I just shut my phone off and sat there for a second and thought, Cortez Kennedy, you know, he just got inducted to the Hall of Fame not too long ago and he was extremely young, you know. Uh, most guys are inducted in the NFL when they're, you know, mid to early, early to mid to late 40s. And so, you know, sure enough, he's 48 years old, you know. And, it, and when I think about it, you know, the reality is that's not too much farther down the road from where I am. You know, then again, I'm <laughs> a lot smaller than he is, or he was, and uh, definitely shorter. So, but, uh, you know, such a gentle giant. His best friend was uh, Mr. Kennedy, who's our equipment manager for a number of years. And so, I mean, when it tells you that an NFL player of that magnitude, his best friend is a equip an equipment manager, it shows you the connection that he had with the community, uh, with the team, and, you know, that the impact that he left on this team, you know. Sure, we had all these players over the years like Large and Zorn, Dave Craig, Brian Blades, Joey Galloway um, that came here and played. Brian Bosworth for one or two years, I think he was here. But the impact that that Cortez left was unprecedented. And, you know, the guys that are here, Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill, you know, anyone else working on the line, um, it, it'll never come close to what Cortez did. Cortez was an, an unstoppable force uh, for a team that was never on national television, very, you know, poorly respected, didn't have a very good program at all. You know, I think it was the Tom Flores days, Dennis Erickson. Um, yeah, he uh, was a great loss for the city of Seattle. And Cortez Kennedy, rest in peace. I believe I got to see him play one or two times when I was a kid, but um, I'm just glad to say that I, I did, you know, and uh, as a Seattle Seahawks fan, uh, we wish you the best for your family, and thoughts and prayers go out. Um, definitely tough loss, but um, on to brighter, more positive things. Um, so I'm going to continue push. I'm going to do the 500 push-ups for 30-day challenge. Um, I'm going to try to work in a, a, a photo to see like a before and after to see if you really notice it. But I'm not, I'm not very keen on posting shirtless photos on the internet of myself, even if it is for health comparison, um, purposes, just not a fan of it. It's, uh, uh there are a lot of creepy people out there and, uh, you may be one of them. Who knows? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. It's, uh, I'm still on the fence about it, but. Um, I'm definitely telling you that I see the results and pushing myself and, and making the effort every single day to, to know that you have to do something like that of, that of that sort of magnitude is important. And if you take your health seriously, um, you know, it, uh, you should be okay. So uh, continue to push myself and uh, I'm going to shoot for 500. And from that point, um, we'll see if I, if I start banging out 500 quick and easy, um, getting those done. And then I might move it up to 750. Um, and I do see light at the end of the tunnel for possibly trying a thousand. Uh, I'm not crazy to think that, but it, I think a thousand would be possible, um, evenly spread out throughout the day. Uh, you just have to stay on top of it. But 
I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for 500 for the next month and then see how that goes and if it goes well I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the bar um, every single month to see if I can maybe get 750 and uh, if that goes well I'm gonna see about a thousand you know because I am getting better at push-ups and I'm getting uh, motion and a fluid motion and uh, much more much more of a, of a consistency so um, I'm gonna see how that's gonna go so anyway you guys have a great day have a great Wednesday um, and I will talk to you tomorrow thanks